Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, sixth grade mathematics here at West Platte Elementary. Tonight I'm going to show a small video on the work we are doing today, and it was generating and identifying equivalent expressions. We're gonna have your students now generate and identify equivalent expressions. And so your students know that generate means to make equal, equivalent, root word of equal, expressions, anything numerical or algebraic. And in our case, it's now algebraic expressions. They need to also remember the concepts that we had before this. So the other day we talked about using the concept of combining like terms and certain properties you have in mathematics that tell you that one side of the equation is equal to the other side of the equation, or you can have an expression that you can make it look equal by using a certain property. So for just a small lesson to start off with, way, 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 way back when your kids were little and in first grade, your teacher would have asked them seven plus three. That's a numerical expression. They would have then asked your student six plus four. Are those things equal? And hopefully your young lady or your young gentleman said, yes, I know that's 10. That also makes 10. That's just a good concept for them to start learning good number sense. That there's a lot of combinations that make up the number sense of the number 10. So what we're working on now is if this is the same thing as 10 and 10, is there another way that I can write that and it still be 10 without using some other number form? So they know that 7 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 7. This is addition. It's one of our properties. I can switch those numbers around and I still get the same solution. They'll also say that 7 plus 3 is the equation that's equal to 10. Well, now we're going to take these things and we're going to turn it into algebra. So if they look at this and they say x plus x, they know they don't have a value for x, but they know that this side is equal to this side. X plus X really means the same thing as 2X. They will also look at something like this and say that the expression X plus Y is the same as Y plus X. They have to know these things in property form so that they can combine the like terms in order, I like to, they like to say it just makes my life easier in math. I like to tell them that the work process that they have to do then gives them a better visualization of how algebraic expressions actually work and then in the end yes it does make less work for them so i'm going to show you these are just introductory concepts so i'm going to show you how we generate and identify some equivalent expressions using the concepts of combining like terms and properties so i'm going to just use one right now for combining like terms that we did with the kids if i have 6x squared plus 3 plus x plus 9 plus 2x squared. The other day in my video, I told you this was a polynomial. It's an algebraic expression that has more than two algebraic terms. In fact, there's one, two, three, four, five terms in this algebraic expression. And what we want the students to start to do is look at it and say, can I combine anything together in this expression to one, simplify it, and then maybe make it easier on me when I want to solve it. So the first thing the kids have now learned is I'm going to rewrite it, Mrs. P, by highest power to lowest power. And in this case, since these have exponents, they're going to be higher power than just a, a plain variable with no power. So they would start off with 6x squared plus, because all of the operations are addition in between there, I'm going to use addition down in my new expression. And 6x is going to come before 2x because x squared, whatever x is, would give me a higher value than 2x squared. So I'm then going to put 2x squared. I then know that I've used it. I've used it. What comes next? The unknown value of, or the unknown variable known as x because it could be bigger than 9 or 3. I do not know. I then am going to add 9 because 9 is bigger than the number 3. And finally, I'm going to add 3. Now, this is what we started to do the other day. We rewrote, rearranged the algebraic expression, and then we looked at combining like terms. I looked to see, are there any variables that are the same, that have the same power? Right here, 6x squared, 
2x squared. Now, Corey's going to have, I'll, maybe I'll put it up here so he doesn't have to try to pan over. What this really means is x squared, x squared, x squared, x squared, x squared, x squared. How many do I have? How many x squares do I have? I have six of them. Six of them. How many x squares do I have here? I have two of those. How many x squares do I have all together? Six and two make eight x squared. So I can combine those. I then am going to add x. Nothing else resembles x. So I'm going to put x there. Then I get nine and three. Well, this is back to first grade. Can your students add nine and three together? They've been doing it all their life. Those are like terms, they're simple numbers. I can go nine plus three is 12. And mom and dad, this is combining like terms. But when they did that, they also generated an equivalent expression. This is the same as that. Whatever I put in for x, I'm gonna get back the same answer down here if I put in for x. And there are properties that help them do that. The distributive, the commutative, the associative, the identity properties. And they've went through those and we'll continue looking at more of them. But what I want to do right here is prove to mom and dad the same thing I have to prove to your students. Mrs. P, how can this really big problem be the same as now this really small problem? It looks like you took stuff out of it. Well, I did. I actually took some work. To do this right here, that's a problem in itself. X squared, I have to figure out what X is, then I have to square. That's one problem. Then I have to take six times that, that's my second problem. I do the same here, and then I have to add all these things together if I can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That means I'm going to do eight different problems, mathematical problems in that algebraic expression. But if I can combine the like terms, look what I did now. Here's one, then two, three, four. I've cut my work in half by combining like terms. And your students then should be able to fill those in and believe that they get the same answer. So to make it really easy for us tonight, and so I can make this quicker, I'm going to say x is 2. So I'm just going to write 2 wherever x is. So this is an exponent. So that's asking me 2 squared. So 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 6 is 24. 2 times 2 is 4. Times 2 is 8. That's now 2. That stays as a 9. That stays as a 3. 24 plus 8 is 32. 32 plus 2 is 34. 34 plus 9 is 43. And 43 plus 3 is 46. Are you still with me? Doesn't that seem like that took us a long time? Instead, your students can now combine like terms and watch what happens. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 8 is 32. Plus 2 plus 12. 32 and 2 is 34. 34 and 12 is 46. And you can definitely tell that was quicker. That's what we're doing. We're working on combining like terms, making this process quicker for them to show them equivalent expressions. This really is this, but your child's making it easier for themselves because algebra's coming more and more. Seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade, eleventh grade, twelfth grade. They're not getting away from it. I told you, algebra's like life. Solve that problem. Go out there and change the world. That's for tonight. I'll see you all back next week. Have a great weekend.